Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Bob Thurman, and I'm calling all yogis and yoginis who are interested in Vajra Yoga and or have a few initiations, so the sort of advanced side of Vajra Yoga. And I'm just doing a short chat today because I'm uh, very excited about uh, my dear friend Lelung Rinpoche, who is the very high incarnation uh, in the Galupa order with a long history of interconnection with the Nyingma order, actually, uh, from the early times of his incarnation. And his first incarnation that we sort of know about was in the 14th and early 15th century when he became the, a teacher of the great Lama Tsongkhapa. And actually, the uh, like the Dalai Lama's senior tutor, Ling Rinpoche, and others, Captain Ling Rinpoche, they used to always like go like this, oh, Le Long Rinpoche. It was, oh, okay. uh, his, his first incarnation was the Lotak Ken Ten Namka Gansen. And um, he was um, a Kadampa Nyingma. At that time, there was no Galupa or Gandenba, as I prefer to call the Galupas, the Tushita, the Maitreya order. Um, but the Kadampa came coming down from Asang, uh, Atisha and, and Dromdamba was the equivalent. So much so that the new Kadampa was the Galupa order. They called it, eventually became known as the Galupa order, what they called the Kadam Sarva in those days. And uh, But also he was a Dzogchen teacher and practitioner of the Nyingma at the same time that Lothar Namga Gansan. And um, then he incarnated, and he was, and the, the wonderful thing about him is he was considered an emanation of Vajrapani. You know, like the Dalai Lama and the Karmapa are considered emanations of Avalokiteshvara. And um, the Panchen Lama is considered an incarnation of Amitabha and or Kala Chakra, actually. And um, I mean, they're all Buddha, you know, but still they are specific in some sense of what their mission is, what their purpose is. And... Uh, so anyway, the Leilung was a Bajrapani, and it was said that people had the view, some more sort of developed yogis would see him as a Vajrapani when he would teach them. So they would all, I mean, they would, he would look like a Vajrapani, looks a little bit like that, like that, uh, uh, that, that monk over my shoulder, uh, this one, over my, in your view, left shoulder. Um, uh, what looks like my left shoulder, and uh, in your view, uh, which is the Mahakala, actually, but Vajrapani sort of looks like that. <laughs> He's like fierce one, in other words, and uh, <clears throat> holder of Vajra, Vajrapani. And, uh, and so when Tsongkhapa would receive teachings from him, which he did receive, he received Zogten teachings from him, he would see him as Vajrapani. And then he had requested Dzongkhapa for his Madhyamaka teachings and, and Guya Samaja teachings and uh, you know Dzogrim teachings. And then he would perceive Dzongkhapa as Manjushri when that happened. Although uh, Dzongkhapa was taught by Manjushri and then it's controversial in some way, whether Zongaba was Manjushri or what, who he was, you know. Uh, but he certainly was, uh, he certainly became Manjushri in his lifetime, became a Manjushri and studied with Manjushri, with a special version of Manjushri, according to the visionary history. In uh, Tibetan biographies, they have the ordinary view, conventional view biography, which sort of went here, did that, sort of thing, and then they have the visionary biography or the esoteric biography, secret biography, they call it, which is the record of all the visions and the supernormal experiences that the great teachers and the masters had, okay?
So anyway, so this lotus cancer. Anyway, I'm giving this. I'm, I'm I'm talking this morning because I'm so into it. I've have been having a lot of phone conversations with Lelong Rinpoche, who is the seventh incarnation, I think, or so. I'm old, elder privilege. Uh, I can't remember the number of of the Lotus Namke Gansen. And in between, he's had very distinguished incarnations who've been teachers of both pen, young Pension Lamas and young Dalai Lamas. And so he's considered very high type within the, that um, community. And although the present one is a layman, he doesn't live in a monastery. He's not in the sort of hierarchy of the school. Uh, he's a, He lives in England mostly. And he's a prime of life in his 50s. And um, he's an expert in Yamantaka and in uh, all kind of special Leilung teachings, and he has a special Dakini, uh, the Nimes, the sun rays Dakini, uh, who he, uh, who one of his previous lives had a big thing going with. And uh, therefore, he's very popular with our friend, our dear friend, Dr. Nida, in that previous life is. And he has been spending his time collecting all the writings of the previous Leilungs. And uh, we published one book called The Drop of water in the ocean um, of, of uh, ambrosia uh, and um, which is a history of the one of the Leilongs, the biography of one of the Leilongs, not his own autobiography of the current living one and not the biography of Nam Yansen, but he refers to them, but it's the biography of one of them. And anyway, we've been talking and he actually, he prefers not to give the Pao Chikpa, the, the soul hero uh, version of Yamantaka, because he believes that His Holiness uh, doesn't necessarily want to have spread that too much right now. Although people have it, Glenn Mullen gives it online actually, and other people have had it from different lamas and geishas at different times. The retired abbot of the of the uh, Gyume Monastery has given it frequently in Tibet. It may mean in Connecticut nearby here and um, nearby New York in the Dharma Center there. And um, it, so, it, so there are a number of people who have that. And, um, and other people who can come, they can get, he's going to give a special permission in car, uh, initiation to the yellow uh, or golden Manjushri, very rare form of fierce golden Yamantaka that I have a picture of. Uh, he gave me a picture of, I didn't even know that one. They're these rather arcane ones. So that's the one he's mainly giving. And then the white Manjushri, which is very important and peaceful one, mild one. And then they're all peaceful. Even the fierce ones are peaceful. But um, and some yogini thing, so he's doing a number of things. But he's at the moment still preferring not to uh, do the full um, uh, ekavira one, the uh, long ceremony of that. But those who already have that can use it as a can add the golden one and use it to accumulate a retreat that makes them more able to preserve their initiation. And we and we'll give instructions in the sadhana. And um, uh, then, uh, and those who don't have that, uh, they can come and they can enrich, they can do the sadhana of the golden yamantaka, and they can enrich their sadhanas of other things very much by having this connection. And uh, I'm just so excited about it. I wanted to talk about it. And uh, I wanted to explain sort of more what goes on with it. And right away, also, there were questions at the beginning of the retreat, starting on the day of the 1st of August, 30th of June and July, no, 31st of July. Starting on the 31st of July, it will be some of the initiations. And they'll be on other initiations during the event. Uh, and uh, uh, then we will use the sadhana of uh, a version of the Yamantaka sadhana for the golden one. And then people will accumulate mantras. And it, because this is a practice retreat, 
It's not just endless lecture, endless lecturing, and so on. There will be. Uh, I will also give lectures. They can also do yogas, um, Tibetan yogas and Hatha yoga, Indian Buddhist yogas, the Indian Buddhist versions of Hatha yoga, and uh, Buddhist tinge. Well, we don't need to get into the theological differences between Sankhya and Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism, which all have different theologies or uh, cosmologies or something. So I just want to do that. And uh, I'm absolutely excited about it. Also, the Rinpoche is coming two weeks ahead of time to do a special, and we'll be at Menla, but not for the public. We'll be doing a special retreat in preparation for the special Lelung version of a Yamantaka, Yamantaka Manjushri, mild and fierce Manjushri teachings. And uh, I were very honored to, to host him in doing that for two weeks before. So he will already have, and I would recommend to yogis and yoginis in our circle who are excited about practice that they themselves, although he, he will not be done publicly with him, and I don't think we have room at Menla for a lot of people during that those times because Menla is very popular and crowded. But although there might be dorm room or something during that, I mean, if somebody wants to. But I would recommend that people could use that time themselves at home, I'm going to, to do partial retreats as much as they can manage, some retreats and some of the of the practices they already have, uh, Tara, Yogini, uh, whatever it might be, any of the other ones, Kala Chakra, to sort of get themselves into really yogic gear, I mean, to really take the best of this extraordinary opportunity of having someone who's like a young Dalai Lama, kind of almost, but under Dalai Lama, absolutely. The, the reason for his hesitancy on the full Yamantaka, the full, the not that I won't say full, but the Ekavira one, the Pao Chikpa, is he feels Dalai Lama is not favoring that from lay, lay Rinpoche's to perform. Some may do it anyway, but he doesn't want to do anything that he even slightly thinks His Holiness would not be pleased with. And this is something he has a special thing and gift about. So the, the golden Yamantaka. And so that he is doing. And I'm just, I'm excited. I wanted you to be excited. And um, I want to, and anyone who wants uh, a sadhana of Yamantaka that I have, uh, which is not yet tinged toward the yellow one, I will be happy to send it. I'm having some revisions done to it at the moment. But I will be happy to send that ahead of time if they want online where they can then have it printed out. And um, and this is going to be a special event. I'm also enjoying it because in the middle of this number, during these dates, uh, on August 3rd is my 82nd birthday. So it's kind of a birthday present for me to have this wonderful Rinpoche there, who I think is some extraordinary. And I'm, I'm, and I'm so thrilled. He's especially also he's doing a, a true retreat of his own there for two weeks before which gives, gives a special blessing to Menla and bodes well, I think, for our long-term relationship as, as fellow yogis. And um, so I'm very thrilled about it. So that's really all I wanted to say today. Um, and um, I hope this goes out in some form to you uh, soon so you can make your plans and let us know. And you should let us know really soon, anybody who does plan to come, uh, because the time that space is a little tight um, because because of uh, the um, problem of being successful <laughs> and uh, and uh, everybody wants to be at Menla. So uh, our own program is not that huge yet though, so we do have room. Uh, but um, uh, soon as we know the better anybody needs rooms, we need to know that, okay? So that's all. In, in general, let me just last say, the one thing I want to last say last is I've been putting a lot of effort over the last year or two in Vajra Yoga. 
and which is not Vajrayana, and not everyone doing it. Most people who I hope will be learning and training have been training in Vajra Yoga, and the more who will in the future uh, are not necessarily signing up for either Buddhism or Vajra or Vajrayana, uh, advanced Buddhist yoga. But some of the methodologies, nevertheless, no matter what their religion is or anything, will be available through Vajra Yoga. That's the point of Vajra Yoga. It's Hatha Yoga, which is methodology of Sankhya Hinduism, yoga and Sankhya Hinduism, and very much methodology also of mind-only school Mahayana, and also methodology of the Theravada, um, more realist schools of Buddhism, the dualistic schools of Buddhism. And um, uh, so that's what they will be doing. And uh, so, however, I'm, I myself am retired from university teaching, and I did a lot of teaching and have a lot of uh, video resources that I will devote to the Vajra Yoga, and I will also give live coaching and instruction in that. But I may, in the next coming years, uh, may focus more on this kind of practice thing, advanced practice thing, uh, and I, I want to revive our Kala Chakra group uh, very strongly. I want to work on the yogini things and the Tara things, especially I think in the Me Too era uh, and where women are finally, which is, and it's beyond, by the way, the Me Too era. That's a good, that's one good version. But the point is, in our planetary crisis of the pollution of the atmosphere and also of the violence of the war by the leftover dictatorships, the leftover remnants of the world wars, which is really what they are. They're not something new in the 21st century. They are all, according to Gandhi's prophecy, they're leftover from the world wars. We haven't really started the new century Dalai Lama promises us and urges upon us, which is not a century of Buddhism, but it's a century of peace where we don't have these kind of horrible wars like the current Russian invasion of Ukraine. And, um, and therefore, and also the Wagner groups, different wars in Africa and et cetera. And uh, we, we won't have those. And therefore, women need to have more power in more governments because they are less likely to do that. This is one of his holiness's reasonings. And so in that light, the female deities, Vishwamata of Kala Chakra, Ajra Yogini, Naro Yogini, uh, the Tara, all of different versions of Tara, I think we should pay, I want to pay a lot more attention to these and do retreats on these as a separate thing, although some advanced Vajra Yoga people can also participate in them. And, um, but I want to do that as a separate, I want to make that my, more my emphasis from, uh, from now on. And uh, yet I will, of course, continue to participate and co-lead uh, training retreats. And also we are developing a certificate that we will award to those who do it, which will be added to their Yoga Alliance certificate, which is the foundation they have, and will be developing further, getting more hundreds of hours in those trainings. But we will be adding a, a Tibet house, uh, perhaps international Tibet house, as we're negotiating all of that, a Tibet house cert certification as well for everyone, which will hopefully stand them in good stead when they become, as they become teachers, and they, they, um, where they, they make access to Vajra Yoga in their own yoga centers and so forth around the world, which we hope they will. And we are making that available to them. We are training them for that purpose, right? So I just wanted to mention that to everyone. So this thing that is going to be so much fun, July 30th through August 6th, uh, for which I really hope my advanced yogis and yoginis will be coming, um, Please let us know. And that's the point of today. Okay. Thank you very much. Dedicate the virtue to all beings uh, may, and to our becoming Buddhahood for their sake, which we all want to do as soon as possible to help them as soon as possible. All right. Okay. That's how we dedicate the merit. Ding.